that one doesn't get empirical formula problems. Empirical formula just means the simplest ratio of, of atoms. Um, so if you had something that looked like um, B2, H, here we go, B2, H6, the simplest ratio of these atoms is really um, for every one, see how we have a 2 and a 6, you can find the, the least common multiple there, like BH3, right? So I can divide both 2 and, um, and 6 by 2, and I can get 1 and 3. So this is my simplest ratio. It's really 1 to 3, not 2 to 6. So that's what we're going to, um, you know, that's the simplest formula. What we're going to find here in this problem is we're going to find this empirical formula. Um, and usually what they do is they give you the mass percent of the elements and then you assume you have a 100 gram sample. If you do that, you can just turn all those percents to grams. And then once you're in the gram world, you can convert from grams to moles using molar mass. Uh, and then once you're in the moles, you want to find the simplest molar ratio. So then you divide by the smallest number of moles, which everyone has the smallest number. Uh, and then you should get some whole numbers. If you don't, there's one extra step where you can multiply by some number to get everything into um, whole numbers. And so we'll do a couple different problems with this. It's, It'll make more sense as you go through and do it. Uh, so we have a compound is composed of 87.5% nitrogen, keep this flow chart up a little bit, and 12.5% uh, hydrogen. Find the empirical formula. So whenever you see these percents and they say something about empirical formula, you're going to do the same process. So mass percent, they're given those. Assume you have a 100 gram sample. If I have a 100 gram total in my sample and 87.5% of it is due to nitrogen, that means I have 87 0.5 grams of nitrogen and now you're probably more comfortable in the gram world than you are in percent world and the rest of that 12.5 grams is going to be hydrogen and now what you want to do is convert from grams to moles how do you do that molar mass so the molar mass of nitrogen is 14.01 grams per one mole and again I just got that from the um, periodic table 1.01 grams of hydrogen for every one mole now I convert everybody to moles. When I do that, I get 6.25 moles of nitrogen and 12.37 moles of the hydrogen. And now I want to find the simplest molar ratio. So I figure out which number is smaller, that's 6.25, and I'm going to divide both of them by 6.25. That means one of my answers should end up being 1, and this one is 1, and this one ends up being about 2. And so my molar, now these just become my subscripts. So I have nitrogen, and just write it whatever order they give it to you. They give you nitrogen and then hydrogen, write it in that order, and that's fine. So I have a one for a nitrogen, and I have two for hydrogen. So all I'm doing is finding that simple, simplest molar ratio. For every one mole of nitrogen, I have two moles of hydrogen. And since we don't usually write subscripts on uh, the nitrogen, I'm going to erase that. If there's nothing written there, it's one. So this is a one to two. Let's try another one of these. So this one is... Um, something that's in sunscreen and has a long complicated name but it gives you the um, percent composition by element here so it's composed of 61 percent 61.3 percent um, carbon 5.14 percent hydrogen 10.21 uh, percent nitrogen and 23.33 percent oxygen so we want to find the empirical formula so again we're finding the empirical formula you're going to take all those percents and convert them to grams. So if you assume you have a 100 gram sample and 61.31% of it is carbon, then you have 61.31 grams of carbon. You have 5.14 grams of hydrogen. You have 10.21 grams of nitrogen and 23.33 grams of oxygen. Now you just want to take those grams, convert them to moles. And you're going to do that with the molar mass. So I look up the molar mass of carbon, and it's 12.01 grams per one mole. For hydrogen, it's 1.01 .01 grams per one mole. Nitrogen, 14.01 grams per one mole. And oxygen is 16 grams per one mole. So Pause the video for a second, work those out in your calculator. So again, I'm just dividing each one of these atoms, these elements by their molar mass. I get 5.105, 5.14, 5.15, 5.17, 5.18, 5.19, 5.20, 5.21, 5.23, 5.24, 5.25, 5.26, 5.27, 5.28, 5.29, 5.30, 5.31, 5.32, 5.33, 5.34, 
5.09 and nitrogen was 0 0.7288 and oxygen 1.456 all right so those are our moles now to find the simplest molar ratio we're going to divide by the, everyone by the smallest number of moles which is the point seven two eight eight point seven two eight eight point seven two eight eight so everybody gets divided by the smallest number of moles and you end up with about seven about seven exactly one and about two so the empirical formula for this one is C H N O and I have seven carbons so that becomes my subscript seven hydrogens one nitrogen and two oxygens so that's the empirical formula that's the simplest um, molar ratio of atoms in this compound a similar version of um, empirical formula of this problem is something we're going to do in lab. <laughs> All right, and so this is a very this next problem is very similar to what we're going to do in lab. So look, this is also similar to your pre-lab. So the pre-lab is always related to the lab. Looks just like this problem. So in lab, we're going to have a hydrate. It's not this one, but we're going to have. So in this problem, we have a hydrate of um, sodium carbonate. So a hydrate is just something that absorbs a certain amount of water in the crystal structure. So you have the solid form of it, but it actually incorporates some of the water molecules into the crystal structure. And for this, in this case, this X represents a number. We're going to try to find that X. We're going to try to figure out how many moles of water um, are there for every one mole of sodium carbonate. So that's how it's an empirical formula. It's kind of this ratio of water molecules to um, formula units of sodium carbonate. Um, and so, so hydrate contains a certain amount of water. You have a 2.558 gram sample of the hydrate. You're going to heat it and it drives off the water. So in lab, what we're going to do is we're going to put this sample in a crucible. We're going to heat it up with a Bunsen burner um, and you're going to weigh it before and you weigh it after and you're going to see that it loses some weight. And the weight that is lost is the mass of the water. So you're going to drive off the water that's in this, this hydrated complex. Now when we do it in lab, you're going to use um, copper, uh, yeah, copper sulfate, copper 2 sulfate. And it's going, to ha it's going to be blue, and then you heat it up and it turns white. Um, and so you know the hydrated complex is blue, and then it, it becomes white. Um, so you can actually see that in lab. But in this case, we just have a 2.558 gram sample before, and then we drive up all the water and we have a 0.98 gram sample. So we can figure out the mass of water um, that was removed just by subtracting. So we have 2.558 grams. We're going to subtract out the 0.948 grams. And we get 1.6, one, 1.10. 1, oh, grams of water. And this one, this 0.998, 948, that is the sodium uh, carbonate. So now I know grams of sodium carbonate, I know grams of water, I can just convert both of those to moles. Uh, how do I do that? I need to know the molar mass. 